Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be installing the Phoenix Automotive 12.1 inch Android radio, the PX6, into a 4th gen Dodge Ram. And before we get into the install, I'm going to show you a few things on this radio and what all comes with it. Alright, so when we open the box, the first thing we're going to find is the main radio unit attached to the radio bezel. Now, this unit comes with a new radio bezel because your stock one will not fit the large screen. Okay, so this is the main unit right here. We have the 12.1 inch screen. The pieces from your stock bezel are gonna go in here. And then down here will be your HVAC controls. And then up at the top up here is where they have moved all of the buttons. And what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to transfer over your buttons to this panel. And I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. All right, so if we look further into the box, we've got some wiring here. We've got a DVR camera that I also ordered along with it. Instruction manual for that. Now this is a bottom trim piece. If you have a center console instead of the jump seat, you're gonna need this bottom trim piece and it attaches down here along the bottom of the radio unit so that it sits flush with your center console. And then we've got some trim pieces for the radio bezel. And then we've got the main harness and all of the adapters and relays right here. And we'll get into all of this when we're installing the head unit. All right, since I have a floor console in my truck, I went ahead and I installed this bottom piece here that will meet with the center console. It's just mounted with two screws here in the back. Okay, so now that we have this all set up, we're gonna head into the truck and remove everything that's coming out. Okay guys, so this is the unit that we're gonna be replacing. It's the stock RES unit for the 09 to 12 Rams. And then of course we have the center console, radio bezel with the center console right here. So what we're gonna do first is, we're gonna remove the rubber mat from up here and you're gonna find two T25 torque bits up here and you're gonna remove them. Once you remove them, just give it a pull and it'll pop out. All right, now once you have that popped, you can go ahead and pop out your cup holder, the chrome ring around your cup holder here. Put that to the side. And then you gotta pop out the side panels for the center console as well. And then put that to the side. Once you have all that to the side, this should just pull right out. Now, if you're like me and my shifter's right here, you might have to put the key in the ignition and shift it in the drive to get the bezel around the shifter. Now, we need to disconnect everything in the back. Okay, so first you wanna disconnect all the plugs back here. Now that we have this out, we're gonna to head to the back of the truck and swap over all these parts to the new bezel that came with the radio. So let's go do that now. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is we wanna start removing stuff from here that we're gonna need for the other bezel. And we're gonna need the air condition and heat controls, the air vents on both sides, and this little empty cubby hole here or your four wheel drive selector if you have four wheel drive. We do not need this blank plate. We do not need the top piece or anything else that is already on the other radio bezel. So I'm gonna get started on this real quick. Okay, so now we have all of our parts out of the old bezel. We need to put them in the new bezel. So we're gonna go ahead and start with the HVAC controls first. Okay guys, so if you can see on mine, does not line up, there's a huge gap. They include a piece for this. Because the included piece is right here. Should just go right on the front like that. Okay, yeah, that's a much better look than how it was a minute ago. All right guys, we have our HVAC controls mounted. So the next step's gonna be to mount our vents and our cubby hole. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. These just push and click in. You just gotta make sure you're working on the right side here. And uh, it's that simple. Just clicked right in. Now, we're gonna put the cubby hole in first on this side or your four x four selector, whichever you have, because I already know from experience that the way to install on this Phoenix bezel is to install the bottom one 
and this top one at the same time. Otherwise they end up pinching each other and they don't line up smoothly right here where they meet. So you wanna mount these at the same time together. Now this air vent seems to be a little loose. So next up, what we gotta do is we've gotta take these buttons off here and we've gotta put the module into this location right here with the new buttons. All right guys, so here's how I got the motherboard off of the buttons. So at first, I was trying to pop out the pins right here. These little pins on the top, I was trying to pop them out and it just wasn't working. So what I did was I put a flat head along the seam here and just kind of popped it up on both sides and I was able to get it off. So once you get the motherboard off of your buttons, you're gonna come over here to the new unit and you're gonna line up your buttons and they're just gonna click in. And it's all you got to do, and it's clicked in. All right, guys, now that we have our buttons in, we can go ahead and put the bottom trim piece back on for the center console if you need it. All right, guys, so the last thing we have to do is put in our auxiliary plug. Just got to pinch and push. And the cover comes off. And then in here, there's four pins, locking pins. You take a flat head and stick it in there while you push out on it. You can very easily pop it out. And Phoenix is nice enough here to include a couple covers. So if we flip this over, now you can either use your old cover or you can use the one that Phoenix supplies. So it either takes the one with the three prongs or it takes this one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this one on that came from Phoenix so it matches the unit. Just clicks right over. And it's installed. Put the extra ones back in the box and now we are ready to put this into the truck and get it wired up, but we have one last thing to do first, and that's to remove the old radio. So let's go do that. All right, guys, we're back in the truck. Now we need to remove the radio, and it's gonna have four bolts, one in each corner. So we're gonna go ahead and remove those real quick and then unplug all the wiring. So depending on what model radio you have, you're gonna have a couple sets of wires back here. So I'm gonna disconnect the main harness and then disconnect the antenna wiring as well as the satellite radio. Now this can just go put to the side. We're gonna go grab our new radio and I'll be right back. All right guys, so before we get started with this in the vehicle, we're gonna to wanna to try to attach as many wires as we can out here to make it easier. So. The first things first is the yellow plug, which is gonna be our USB dongles. What you have to do is you have to look at the cut of the plug. So you gotta look at the cut of the plug and how it's made and match it up with where it goes here. No two are the same. So this one looks like it goes right there, if I am correct, and yes I am. So that one goes there and that's the USB dongle. All right guys, so I plugged in the main harness here. And then you've got the blue plug, the white plug, the yellow plug. Over here you've got your GPS antenna, which is the blue plug. You've got your radio antenna, which goes in here with this black plug. And you've got your USB wires here. You can run them to the glove box wherever you want. Now you've got your cam, bo cam bus decoder box here. This end just stays unplugged. You got a couple connections here, but these are going to get connected to stuff inside the vehicle. So let's bring this in there now. All right, guys, we have a lot of wires here to figure out. So let's get started on this. So, of course, the main harness one is going to connect to this. So we got the main harness connected. All right, so we've got the stock antenna right here. All right, so this wire goes 
into it into that and then this wire goes into here so I'm gonna run the USB extension here so that it reaches out to the glove box now we got this wire here which I believe goes to this, if I'm not mistaken, yes. If you bought the DVR with your radio, just gets plugged into one of the USBs. I'll route that to the glove box later. This is the dash cam DVR that's included. Well, not included, but it's an option to purchase. I've also got a backup camera here that I am gonna wire real quick so that it's wired and then I can install it later. All right, so I've got the wires stripped for the aftermarket backup camera. And what I'm gonna use to connect them are these connectors that I bought on Amazon. It was like six bucks for 12 of them. And they're these quick connects. And they're really cool because you just put the wires in and close them and it makes a perfect connection and seal. And I'll link these down below in the description. Crimp that nice and tight. Come over here. Before we close this all up, I am gonna run this wiring down here so that I can get to it later. And uh, I think we have everything hooked up at this point. All right, guys, that's the install for this unit. I'm going to do another video reviewing it, going over all the settings and features in a couple days once I learn them all. But that is pretty much how you put this together and install it. The wiring is very simple. Each plug only has one plug that can fit into it, so you can't mix up plugs at all. Kind of like a circle going into a square. It won't work. Wiring up is really easy. You can follow what I showed you earlier, or you can just figure out what plug goes where by trying to plug them in. The only issue I had was the top row of buttons along the top up here. The wire inside my truck, the stock wiring, will not reach this. I had to cut a couple zip ties that had the harness strapped down to loosen the wire and it just barely fits. I have to squeeze my hand through this crack just to plug it in and Phoenix Automotive should include some kind of extension for that because the buttons are normally down here and now they're up here and the wiring is just not meant to go that high. But other than that, it seems like everything's hooked up working right and uh, that's going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and be sure to check back next week. I'm going to have a whole video breaking down all the features of this and everything you can do with it, all the apps you can install, and everything that you can customize. So if you want to see that video, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell so you're notified as soon as the next video comes out. I also have a bunch of retrofit videos coming out where I show you step by step how to build a retrofit for a 09 to 18 Ram quad set of headlights. I also have Alpha Rex builds coming out, custom Alpha Rex lights. Yeah guys, uh, have a nice day and uh, I'll see you in the next one.